Hello, I am Randy Kreil, and this may be the best book ever written on dieting, getting to a healthy weight and staying there, uh, weight loss, How Not to Diet by the Dr. Michael Greger. Dr. Greger is the epitome of intelligence and integrity. He started and runs a nonprofit called nutritionfacts.org. Pretty much everything you ever needed to know about nutrition is free on his website, on his YouTube channel, etc. All profits from all of his books go to nutritionfacts.org. His information is based on the best available science. I have been benefiting from Dr. Greger's YouTube videos for many years. His channel is amongst the best thing on YouTube. He, his book, How Not to Die, is fantastic. I've owned it for years. And when my PSA numbers went up recently to a suspicious level, I looked up the chapter on how not to die from prostate cancer and within six weeks used his recommendations. Uh, my numbers went back well uh, into the safe zone. Just a quick background. Um, I am well over 10 years into a 100% plant-based diet. For approximately the last three years, I've done a very good job of being at a very healthy weight, kind of in the middle of my uh, healthy BMI range. And after reading How Not to Diet, I realized there's definitely room for improvement. Um, I should probably be about five pounds lower. And the many, many tips from the 570 page how Not to Diet um, are definitely helping me get there. Based on information within this book, I now realize that I can safely go down to the next lower weight range, um, lower middle part of my healthy BMI range, and hopefully that will help with my uh, cholesterol numbers. Over the years, um, having had cancer and other chronic health problems, I've dropped about 60 pounds and so, so i know how difficult that can be trying to go from a healthy weight to an even healthier weight is extraordinarily challenging and the hacks i'm learning from dr greger based on science i feel are much more than placebos um, they're helping but even if they're placebos they're still helping um, so I want to share a few of those with you. Uh, really, you should get the book, read it, or at the very least, get the app. Some simple ideas to help actually lose weight to get to an even healthier weight range are ideas based in science or backed by science that help us either burn more fat, um, become more satiated with highly nutritious foods that contain more water, um, seasonings that help curb our appetite. One of the first ideas from the book I've implemented is taking in two teaspoons of vinegar, something like apple cider vinegar or say mango infused vinegar. Um, Doing that three times a day, generally with meals, helps us burn more fat. Taking in whole foods versus, versus liquids is important as well. Uh, smoothies are not very good in the sense that um, they don't fill us up and we drink them so fast that uh, we just tend to take in more calories with smoothies. So we're much better off slowly chewing and savoring our food. Uh, there is one exception, and that would be warm or hot vegetable-based soups. And one of the uh, good ideas for that is to 
eat slowly with a smaller spoon. Uh, I'm learning to use smaller eating utensils, smaller bowls, smaller plates, and trying to eat more mindfully. Every day I'm taking in a couple tablespoons of ground organic flaxseed along with organic soy milk at least a couple times a day for many reasons. Uh, including um, metabolic health. Simply consuming a couple cups of water before each meal tends to help us consume less calories during that meal. Some common seasonings that help us curb appetite include ginger, about a quarter of a teaspoon of each of these. Uh, ginger, cayenne pepper powder, uh, cumin seed, black cumin seed, and garlic powder. Yum! Uh, something to keep in mind is that pasta is much better for us during weight loss than consuming bread. Of course, whole grains are even better than pasta, um, but pasta is um, more acceptable than I thought it would be based on Dr. Greger's research. Truly whole grains are generally best for us. It's how we're meant to eat. Um, using oats as an example. Groats and steel cut oats are basically the same thing. Steel cut oats are simply groats that have been busted down into smaller pieces. Uh, those are the healthiest for us, especially during a weight loss phase. And rolled oats, um, are less advantageous. Between meal snacks, um, a favorite for me is air popped popcorn, uh, but do keep in mind that each cup, which doesn't weigh much, still has 31 calories. Uh, they do add up um, popcorn, air popped popcorn has the caloric equivalent uh, of about 10% uh, of what you would find in potato chips. Not only are the choices we make, the food choices, the quality of those choices, the quantity, of course, is important, but the timing of eating them is critical. Um, we need to consider circadian rhythms, and what that means on a practical level is a 12-hour nightly fasting window is a fantastic idea, uh, sort of a minimum fasting um, idea. And within the eating window, which would then be 12 hours of time uh, for us consuming our food, it's best to consume the bigger meals in the morning. So bigger meal for breakfast, that's when I have my big salad generally. Uh, lunch would be a variation of a salad, possibly um, it would be smaller in total calorie intake, uh, but it would probably be a, a, a vegetable soup or a small soup with a salad, maybe a tortilla shell with hummus and lentils and salsa and tomato and chia seeds, um, or a uh, portobello mushroom with hummus and vegan pesto and, and salsa and so forth. Delicious foods, um, but a ideally a few less calories at lunch than at breakfast. Uh, my dinner would typically be oatmeal with some uh, fresh fruit or frozen fruit. Managing our stress level, our, our cortisol level goes up when we're stressed and that makes it harder for us to maintain a lower and healthier calorie intake. Um, the ideal for most of us is about seven hours of sleep each night. Uh, it's important to uh, wake up about the same time each day, regardless of how much sleep we've had. And uh, a few pistachios a couple hours before bedtime is a great source, a great potential source of natural melatonin. Drink about two cups of water before each meal. If you do that, you're more likely to take in quite a few less calories during the meal. Also, a great idea is to preload with negative calories. Um, while they're not truly negative, um, for example, celery. A lot of people think that, uh, they believe the myth 
that the digestion of celery takes more calories than the celery actually has within it. Uh, that's not true, it's close, but those foods with high water content um, tend to be great for preloading. So if we eat those foods before the rest of our meal, we're also less likely to take in too many calories or more calories during that meal. Dr. Greger recommends um, your feeding window stop at 7 p.m. I typically use 6 p.m. Uh, but the fasting window, I like to look at as a minimum of 12. Sometimes I'll go 13, 14 or more. Uh, but I found 12 hours of fasting is pretty easy. Research shows that we should not only weigh in every day, which I do every morning and I log it, uh, but he also recommends uh, twice a day. Uh, in the morning after you get up and just before going to bed in the evening. Uh, just keep in mind that Dr. Greger is not out to make any money off of anyone's um, pain, suffering, chronic illnesses, etc. Armed with the information in his books, you could easily become better informed, better educated than most medical doctors, nurses, and even nutritionists. Part of the brilliance of this giant book is that the sheer weight and volume and time it takes to read it all, you're gonna have less time to eat, arms gonna get sore, you're getting exercise while you read. <sighs> Knowledge is power. Let's go!